So in the last example, I created this simple bank account, a GraphQL schema type object. Now this type actually has a few bad practices within it, and I intentionally put them there so I could help and potentially avoid you making the same mistake in your application. So what I want to focus on is this name. First of all, what, what is name? Is it the bank account name? Is it the client's name? Is it the bank's name? I mean, it could be anything. It's totally ambiguous. So this is really bad practice for start, really bad naming. You cannot have bad names simply like this. This is terrible. And also, let's say, for example, it is the client's name. Well, if the client and all people will, most people have multiple names. If we want to add in the last name, well, now we have a problem because we're writing the last name on a bank account level, which doesn't really make any sense. So we have a name and a last name. So what we would want is first name and last name to make it more consistent. But these don't belong at a bank account level. So we really have a, a messed up schema here. In fact, that we're putting fields and objects in objects which they don't belong. So what I encourage you to do is, first of all, really give your fields really good names. They can be very descriptive. The more descriptive, the better. And also, instead of having these single fields which represent simple scalar types, like a string, a boolean, a currency, float ID, or int, what we can do is actually go ahead and create what's called like a wrapper type. And in this example, I'm gonna be changing name, because it's the client name, into a client object. And let's say this is the client of who owns this bank account. You could be more specific if you like, but for this demo, it's fine. So I'm going to say client GraphQLS and inside this client what we have is first name and simply a last name as most people have both. And now as you can see it's quite clear that this client has a bank account or the client owns the bank account and inside the client you have a first name and a last name and let's say that's running and that's fine say for example the client has an have an id well we can simply add in the id if the client has multiple middle names then we can simply add in a list of middle names and make it optional but if there is one it must be not null so as you can see, we can easily evolve the client object. And um, this is fantastic because we can make changes in a backwards compatible way. We can add new fields and we simply don't have to remove and we don't have to worry about old clients using old fields that are now duplicated into wrapper objects as our business evolves, as our schema evolves and that. So hopefully there are two quick and nice good tips for you. And I will see you in the next episode.